and welcome to the IMAA's Insights and Innovation Series, guys. Hope everyone is well in this cold. Um, New South Wales won the State of Origin last night um, um, afternoon. And today we have the pleasure and honour of introducing uh, an IMAA partner and good friends and wonderful people, uh, the guys from Bishop and Media. Uh, Alison and Kirsten are going to talk to you guys today about a number of di different things, how to find additional audiences, what's happening in the um, uh, in the Queensland market, different formats, driving markets, and a very, very special launch of a competition today, which um, uh, we even we were discussing behind the scenes just then going, how can we, how can we enter it ourselves? <laughs> very exciting. But without further ado, I'll hand over to the amazing uh, Alison to, uh, to pick up the microphone and kick things off. Over to you guys. Thanks so much, Sam. Um, really pleased to be talking to you all today. I'm just throwing up my screen. I get a thumbs up, Sam, that you can see that and we'll get going. Excellent. So we'd actually like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay respects to their elders present, past and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. I'm Alison Powell and I'm head of the agency team here at Bishop. And this is Kirsten Benning, our team's coordinator. And by coordinator, I mean woman who wears many, many hats. <laughs> so since this may be the first time many of you have seen us pop up, I'd like to share a quick in intro onto who we are, and then I promise to get into the insights. You need local knowledge to buy media in Queensland, and that's our point of difference at Bishop. We are an out-of-home company based in Brisbane, but our staff live all across the state and also across the ditch in New Zealand. But personally, I'm a Queensland native and I've spent most of my 20 year career working in regional media. I'm a full time working mum, lover of dogs and a watcher of movies and probably too much Netflix. But for me, working in our industry is about providing great service and having long lasting relationships built on trust and really caring about the work that I deliver. Um, so, yeah, I'm Kirsten and Alison, as she said, I'm the agency coordinator and I'm lucky enough to call Queensland home, but I'm even luckier to work Bishop at and alongside Alison. So I love all things about the Sunshine State and look I was planning to go gloat about the state of origin today but we'll just leave it at that. Um, so I've been working in the advertising industry for going on two years and I'm absolutely loving every part of it. Um, armed with a marketing degree and years of experience looking after clients um, from all industries in the events sector I'm here to ensure that we go above and beyond to create a seamless experience for our IMAA members to buy out of home in Queensland. So now that you know a little bit about us, we'd love to know a little bit more about you. So we please invite you to connect with us via LinkedIn. We have our QR codes here for you to snap with your phones and we look forward to speaking with our new connections. Now, just mind you, Kirsten and I have a little com competition going on today on who will get the most connections. So definitely add me first. Oh, oh I've already got to <laughs> If you are familiar with our brands at all, you may have come across our major look chooks. We felt that in Out of Home in Australia, it was important for us to use our billboards to also market ourselves. So growing up, everyone played the game of made you look, you dirty chook. We get so many comments about, oh, you have the chickens. So yeah, that's us. We actually like to call ourselves the Bishop Chicks, but really we just want you to know who to call. So we value all regions of Queensland equally and across the state we have over a thousand classic and 27 digital roadside billboards and eight Queensland airports. What makes us unique is our on the ground knowledge, living in all regions and really knowing our markets. We ourselves take great pride in being a family owned Queensland run independent business. For our innovation and insights webinar today and also when working with us every day, we want to help our indie agency partners understand the Queensland market. Thanks for taking the time to join us and find out about the growing opportunity that has quickly returned with the opening of borders and the return of domestic travel across Australia after what's been a challenging couple of years with COVID-19. There are three sections to our session today and we'll kick off by discussing some of the current stats and predictions. And since passengers have returned to airports, we can also return to talking about why airports are such an amazing space to advertise in. And then we'll finish off with how and why to utilize billboards in Queensland drive markets. We are passionate about supporting and growing brands and small businesses, which is the number one reason why we are grateful for our vendor partnership with the IMAA that kicked off earlier this year. We hope after our webinar today that you leave us some interesting information that will help with your new financial year plans. 
This webinar will run for approximately 20 minutes plus any questions. However, we'd really like to finish off with some exciting details around our Bishop promotion, where we will announce a fun and fabulous competition we're running just for our IMAA partners from now until the end of the year. We want to create some buzz and excitement about our home state, along with giving a lucky member something amazing to look forward to in early 2023. So you can come and check it all out for yourself. Trust me, you're going to want to stay right till the end to hear all about it. So let's start with the stats. Queensland is the most decentralised state in Australia. And based on 2020 ABS statistics, 51% of the population live outside our capital city, therefore making regional Queensland a substantial market to pay attention to for gaining extra reach for your media campaigns. This is why you need on the ground knowledge. No other business invests in having the staff on the ground like us and to understand their market. Because of the geographic distance between each key region, regional Queenslanders are used to being on the road and our airports are frequented daily to commute around the state. When we look at the audiences using the airport, we have FIFO workers who are considered essential workers and were barely affected by the pandemic. But now tourists, family visits and business travellers are returning and in some cases already returned to pre-pandemic levels with domestic passenger numbers predicting double digit growth in the years ahead. We would also like to share with you our insights into how the return of domestic travel allows you to tap into valuable audiences flying interstate into Queensland. These audiences are affluent, alert and receptive to messaging. It's also worth noting the four international airports in Queensland and the steps that are being taken in Cairns, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane and the Gold Coast to revive the tourism industry. It's no secret that the COVID-19 pandemic had a devastating effect on Australia's visitor economy. Tourism losses since the start of the pandemic were to over $100 billion. The Queensland's tourism industry and the Queensland government have set up a $200 million attracting aviation investment fund in partnership with Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast and Cairns airports. The aim is to bring more overseas passengers to Queensland and it's the largest investment of any Australian state or territory in securing inbound international flights after COVID-19. The investment is estimated to deliver up to 5.3 million airline seats per year, generating almost $4 billion in overnight visitor expenditure. Domestic tourism, which accounts for a large majority of the total visitor economy, was also severely affected by the pandemic. However, the recovery is already underway in the domestic sector and is expected to continue through 2022. We have already seen a quick bounce back of passengers flying into our regional Queensland airports since mid-December 2021. And between November 21 and May 2022, there's been a 326% increase in passengers. I'd like to share some trends from the Queensland Tourism Industry Council, suggesting the reasons for the strong bounce back and the optimistic look ahead, which also backs up what we are seeing. They note that the factors supporting domestic growth over this period include a pent up demand for travel. I mean, is anyone here keen for a holiday? Anyone on the screen? Surely everyone's hand is up. Everyone has accrued, leaved and disposable income from during those lockdown periods. I have to travel all the time for work, but I just cannot wait to go on annual leave next week. So we're taking our kids to the Gold Coast theme parks. But don't stress if you get my out of office because Kirsten will be here. Yep, don't worry. Yep. Like, well, Alison's eating fairy floss on the Gold Coast. <laughs> I'll hold down the fort. <laughs> Um, there's been incentivizations from governments um, with travel subsidies and support payments. So I can thank the Queensland government for my discounted theme park tickets mm -hmm. next week. Really cool. Quite nice of them. Mm. And then there's been additional marketing by the tourism industry. Can we just go back to the Qantas ad that they just released? Was I the only one that really teared up while <laughs> watching that? It was visually stunning and it really gave me goosebumps too. Mm. And also the funny Hamish and Zoe oh, commercials. Power couple. I think we can find a bigger big thing. <laughs> I vote for the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, I have to go with the big pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> so next in the, is increasing travel confidence about domestic travel. We've been up in Cairns twice this year, once in February and then again in May. And the change was incredible seeing the city come back to life. <laughs> when we were in Cairns in February, do you remember we drove from Cairns all the way down to Mackay in one day and literally every person we told was thinking why are you girls doing that <laughs> we didn't and, think that big deal yeah. it's actually a lot longer than you think and yeah, then, yeah we're not going to do that again yeah we'll I'm, absolutely fly next time i know but we'll miss those amazing crab sandwiches and cardwell though and all those six by three billboards 
<laughs> and the ongoing barriers to international travel. So Kirsten, are you sure you want to take that month long trip to South Africa next year? Don't you think it'll just be too expensive and difficult and just not a good idea? I know, Alison. I, I hear what you're saying, but unfortunately it's for a wedding. She's getting married on a game with it, so I have to go. You're a true friend. <laughs> so through the National Visitor Survey, we know that there are three main reasons why people travel. For holiday, to visit friends and relatives, and for business. Domestic visitation is forecast to return to around its pre-pandemic level in the next year, and then surpass that previous peak in the 23-24 period. All three major travel segments are forecast to rebound. By travel purpose, leisure travel, which is includes holiday and visiting friends and relatives, is expected to recover faster in the coming years compared to business travel. Travel for holiday purposes, being the largest category, contributes most to the growth over the next two years. Holiday travel declined by more than the other categories relative to those 18, 19 levels, reflecting its discretionary nature and restrictions in place for this type of travel. Travel for business purposes is slower to recover than leisure travel. Nevertheless, business travel is forecast to eventually return to pre-pandemic levels. And this reflects a growing desire for organisations to reunite in the enduring value of face-to-face -face meetings for decision-making and the role of the event sector in building business relationships. A very recent great example of this is attending Khan and Cairns. We were both so fortunate to attend and even to network with our industry again. Oh, and lucky enough to bump into your friend and ours, Sam Buchanan. And my friend Ash Barty. I'm so well connected. <laughs> so being able to attend events again, listen to inspiring speakers in person and hearing important conversation really does wonders. And next month is Mumbrella's event down in Sydney. It's such an important part of our industry to have these events back on and business travel returning. There are several factors that drive the pace of recovery for each state. States or territories that experience additional lockdowns are more likely to have seen larger declines in domestic tourism. The forecasts also account for differences in travel type in each travel region. As mentioned previously, travel for leisure purposes is expected to recover more quickly than travel for business. Across the states and territories, there are differences in the composition and reason for travel within these groups. As an example, while virtual meetings are expected to remain a practical alternative for consulting and finance projects, they are less able to replace site visits in the construction and mining industry. Construction and mining are strong industries in Queensland and being affected less by lockdowns has had less decline to recover from. It's worth noting while regional Queensland is accounted for in these figures, they experienced smaller reductions initially due to being less affected by the pandemic with limited lockdown periods. So they're experiencing a faster recovery. It's pretty amazing to consider that Queensland was operating above 80% of pre-COVID domestic nights, and that was with half the year with the border closed. Gold Coast and Cairns Airport passenger numbers are already breaking records surpassing pre-COVID numbers back in April. Queensland will be back this year. Did anyone try travel this past Easter? Did you get a text to arrive at the airport four hours early for domestic travel? And it's happening again now in all airports over Australia. So we know that the audience is there, and especially going into this school holiday period, we're expecting our airports to now consistently reach over a million passengers a month. So let's chat about placing those ads in front of them. For advertisers, airport communities provide the perfect opportunity to reach consumers where they are most alert. In addition, the nature of the airport environment and significant dwell times drive the receptiveness of brand messaging. It is effective because airport advertising is a premium out of home space paired with reaching particularly affluent consumers. The environment enables targeting of significant audiences who are influential decision makers with purchasing power. Large digital assets in airports with moving video carry high neuro impact factor scores, leaving a lasting impact on passengers. So the media intervention along the passenger journey provides an unavoidable distraction by a multiple touch point. So Media serves not only to entertain, raise awareness and drive engagement, but also directly influence at the point of purchase when time to indulge is freely available. So you'll see the images on this slide of the assets passed in the Cairns airport. So walking through the departures journey, so bag drop, check in, finding something to do while you're waiting for your flight, passengers are alert of their surroundings. So the dwell time for departures can be two hours long. So there is cut through for advertising messages. When you see digital out of home with relevant content at the right moment, your brain response increases by 32%. percent 
Holidaymakers are looking for an experience and are excited for it, whether that is an adventure or just to relax. So tapping into and appealing to that excitement level of passengers is the goal of your brand's airport ads. If you have a client that has a brick and mortar store location in the region of one of our airports, the arrivals journey is a huge opportunity to have your ad in front of relevant consumers. 90% of frequent flyers are likely to dine or shop or visit after learning about them at the airport. So both classic and digital formats work in their own way and have unique characteristics. Classic offers a consistent message for an established duration and offering a greater share of voice. Print media continues to deliver for our advertisers. It is available in many formats, including illuminated and large format. Print media demands attention, cannot be turned off or skipped and can deliver a call to action messages to engage passengers. It is the perfect vehicle to saturate an airport with multiple displays or dominate high impact areas with big, bold statements. So for example, these images um, for Cairns Aquarium. So this is our client in the Cairns airport and they have built these 3D displays of turtles, clownfish and sharks that all eat your bags. <laughs> Um, there is an exhibition space available at many of our airport for really engaging with passengers so can create bespoke opportunities as well. For all of our airports, all of our airports offer digital ads and these offer tactical opportunities to use context, relevancy and immediacy. Ultimately, it depends on your client's campaign objectives and desired impact. So for either airport ads, or roadside ads, they both play a role to build brands. So the all day presence and ownership of a classic space allows for creative to maximize impact. If you need to capture 100% of the drive market, traveling on the Queensland Highway Network using classic out of home plays an important role. So last year in 2021, 14.5 million self-drive vehicle trips were made by Queenslanders for holidays, business travel or to visit friends or relatives. So also there are hundreds of thousands of regional Queenslanders who drive for hours to the closest major town to do their shopping and supplies. So highway classic signs can be the simplest way to speak to these regional audiences. Digital billboards in a highly visible locations are effective in regional towns as they can achieve high reach and frequency and don't have the same creative costs. We have always helped local businesses to make an impact and grow their brand using attention grabbing, visually appealing billboard advertising. Our billboards have a high sell through rate because the local businesses in each region know that our billboards are seen. As we grow as a business, we're now focused to build our brand within the independent advertising agencies to help you achieve your client's goal. A very easy way to increase reach is to advertise in a region when there is an event being held. Using digital roadside billboards and airport advertising in the lead up to and during an event period, we encourage using contextual relevance to increase brain response for effective advertising. Use these events to drive ad engagement. We have three example events coming up in the near future. The Gold Coast Marathon will attract close to 6,000 marathon runners to the region who will participate, bringing with them friends and families to cheer them on this coming weekend. Actually, this weekend as well is the Brisbane Air Show. So that's 80,000 people that are traveling to another regional area in Queensland, in Esk. So if you don't have anything to do this weekend, there's actually two <laughs> events you can go to. Well, that was an extra bonus event that we've just thrown into our program. <laughs> So the Mackay Mining and Engineering Expo from the 18th of July is one of Australia's most significant mining industry exhibitions, which is held at the Mackay Entertainment and Convention Centre and attracts over 5,000 attendees, including the CEOs and decision makers in one of Australia's largest industries. Also, over 23,000 people will attend the Gympie Music Muster at the end of August. All three are very, or four, I should say, are different events, but all attract a large number of people to regional areas of Queensland for an experience. So speak to us about your briefs and we will uncover opportunities in Queensland for you. So Bishop's mix of classic and digital billboards along our airport advertising program means we not only have Queensland covered, but we also reach a growing number of visitors to Queensland. What is unique about our out of home company is that our team are on the ground living in these regions to make sure that we truly have a local edge and expert out of home knowledge. 
When our property team and construction team install a new billboard, they are strategically placed on major motorways, highways and main roads. Part of our team's induction starts with a road trip down the northeast coast from Cairns to Brisbane so that we understand the markets, not all in one day. <laughs> um, we have put the time and effort into securing the best inventory. We live here and are community minded and have a knowledge and knowledgeable about the locations of infrastructure. As far as our agency team goes, know that you are speaking with a pair, a passionate pair who are excited to work with you on behalf of your clients to really achieve great outcomes together. So while the passenger numbers are growing, it's a safe place to put your brands in front of this, this travel boom. Okay, so let's watch some tourism marketing. <laughs> I hope this song is in your head for the rest of the day. We wanted to set the scene. So, how about a site visit to one of our tourism airports? Proserpine is the gateway to the Whit Sundays. But when I say site visit, I really mean a holiday to Ely Beach, including four prepaid return airline tickets, your accommodation, activities, dining, and we'll work with you to find available travel dates. It's going to be so awesome. I hope you pack us to come along with your extra yeah. tickets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll work with you to design the dream Queensland Whit Sundays holiday. Bishop are running a comp just for IMAA agencies. That for every $5,000 billed on media or production between the 1st of July and the 31st of December 2022, you'll receive an entry to win this prize. Any campaigns running between this period and existing bookings do count. Your name will need to be signed on the contract to be entered, and we'll be sending through to the team of the IMAA all of the T's and C's for the comp to be distributed to you in the very near future. So let's take some time now just to see if there's any questions and I'll throw back to Sam shortly, but uh, that's a wrap on our content today. So I just want to say a huge thanks for joining us, yeah, coming on you. to hear all about it. Um, and again, here are our details just in case. Yeah, keep scanning.